Hey, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, this is Elan, and uh, welcome back to the Holistic Health Podcast. Today, I'm joined uh, for the second time by Finn, and Finn is the head coach uh, for me at Coach Elan, and he's been working with a lot of our clients over the last few months, and we've been working together since August, and we want to do another podcast today, but we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some specific topics Uh, more around like common issues or challenges that a lot of clients that we work with tend to face on a regular basis. And then we're going to go into a lot of those in depth and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. But uh, before we get started, Finn, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks for having me along. And yeah, looking forward to this episode. Like I think it's, I think it's a really important one to delve into because I know from coaching a lot of people over the years it's so often like we feel that the problems that we have is the problem that we have ourselves but it's actually there's a lot of very common common threads that that run through and it's a matter of once we can understand that and we can see how other people have been able to work through our own specific challenges it makes the journey so much easier for ourselves so yeah looking forward to covering some some interesting topics today yeah me too because uh this is the stuff that really interests me is like trying to give like give really practical and sustainable solutions to common issues and and obviously for you know a good few years now um we've been working specifically just with women and so i've been able to really delve in and and see a lot of what are those challenges are and Mm -hmm. get so much feedback from hundreds of different women and that we've worked with um so the first one um i wrote out a long list uh, of different things but (laughs) self-sabotage is the thing that I come across most it's something that I think everybody deals with like I dealt with my own self-sabotage in a lot of ways still constantly dealing with it like nobody's perfect so we all we all sabotage in our own specific ways but some of the ways that I've seen specifically that popped up with different um you know women that I've worked with over the last few years is like the I'll I'll name out a few of the different ideas I wrote down so it's the all or nothing mindset that kind of ties into the perfectionist mindset. Um, that kind of ties into falling off the wagon. And then there's a few other things that come along with that. But what I've wrote down so far is that, you know, um, it, ta- it kind of ends up being like a vicious cycle that a lot of people get stuck in. So for example, with being all or nothing, it can be a very, it could literally be as simple as like, oh, if I don't get my, three workouts or if I don't get my five workouts done this week that I've planned if I don't get all five of those done even if I do four that's a failure Mm. so so now it's like okay well now if I failed I've essentially now I'm falling off the wagon now that I fell off the wagon okay now I'm in the fuck it mindset of like okay well well I just had a big failure and I've ruined my progress so what's the point of doing anything now And then it's so easy to end up in this kind of like negative spiral. And there's other like, um, you know, other ways that can pop up as well. It doesn't have to be training. It could literally be like with food, you could have this unrealistic expectation of like, oh, I need to eat perfectly all week. I need to eat my three meals. I need to, you know, be healthy, quote unquote, whatever way that is. And if I don't eat perfectly, well, then I've just ruined my progress and then you end up in that vicious cycle again of being like, oh, well, what's the point? And going down a really bad, you know, into a negative state of mind. So that was one of the main ones I wanted to talk about first. But um, yeah, what are some yeah. of thoughts on, on some of those? Uh, it's, yeah, like such a big one. Like it's even before getting into the specifics of the different patterns of self-sabotage, like when we understand self-sabotage, what it is for ourselves like it's it's one of the biggest things that that trips up everyone no matter who you are no matter what's going on in your life like everyone has certain patterns that are going to come into play um that are going to cause us to trip up but it's the matter of when we become aware of the beha- the behaviors and patterns that we do it's easier to start combating them and like that's one of the first things that i like to work on with clients is actually it's it's not just about looking at what happens when you sabotage it's actually going back and understanding it's like right why is sabotaging in the first place mm-hmm. and because when we start becoming aware and understanding why we do what we do it gives us the power to then start putting in changes to prevent that act from actually happening in the first place 
Yeah, absolutely. That's so powerful. Um, just getting that self-awareness is obviously, would you say that's pretty much like step one? Yeah, 100%. Like it's like, because a lot of times without that self-awareness, like you're going to be, you're going to do really well following a program until life happens. And then if you're not aware of your your patterns, if you're not aware of your sabotaging behaviors, you're doing really well into the program until life happens, you get busy. And then this, then whatever happens, whatever the old, old patterns start coming into play. And then that's whenever you fall off the wagon, that's where you like fall into that perfectionism and they go, I feel so what's the point or just go into that fucking mind, mindset. And then that's, you're, you come through that. And normally like it could take anything from a couple of days to be maybe even a week or two to actually pull yourself back out of it. And then you dust yourself off and start again. And it's got to happen. Like, it's one of the first things that I said to clients is like, you're going to fuck up. You're going to fall off the program at some stage or another. But the idea of having the support of us as a coach there is to be able to guide you through that process. So you start learning from your own processes. You're learning from how, how you actually behave. So then you can start putting things in the place that's going to support you better. So it mightn't happen next time. Or if it does happen next time, instead of you falling off the wagon for a week, you might only fall off the wagon for a day and then you can pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love that. And um, yeah, for my own self-awareness and something that I find works well when I'm you know, coaching someone is like first figuring out like what are some of your triggers for different patterns, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like in the past, what has prompted you to want to eat lots of chocolate or to eat lots of crisps or you know have a little binge like that or what's kind of actually propelled you into that negative mindset yeah you know, yeah figuring out what those things are like obviously a lot of the time it tends to be just stress like it could be stress from from work it could be someone in particular at work it could be maybe a deadline coming up maybe it's somebody at home maybe you have kids and they're just stressing you out because you haven't had any time for yourself the last six months or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. And so I think getting clarity on, on those specific kind of triggers, that's um, seems to be quite a powerful thing to do. Yeah. And that's it. Like it's really starting to understand again, as I said, it's understanding why you do what you do. So understanding what are them triggers that cause you to actually sabotage in the first place um so then once you start understanding them that allows you to actually have a bit more control so you can start putting things into place and with this approach like it's it's one of the things that are continuously um harping on to clients that we work with it's it is a journey that we're going on and it's one of the reasons why we want to have a, a program that goes for a number of months so like it's like our main one that we work on is a 16-week program because if you go for like a let's let's lose x amount of pounds in six weeks it's like yeah you'll do really well for them six weeks but then you're left to your own devices after them six weeks and then that's where like you probably didn't sabotage yourself in that six week block whereas when we go on a longer journey it allows you to actually have that big win at the start then life happens then you're going to fall down you're going to you're going to whatever's going to happen so we're going to be supporting you through that so then you're going to come out stronger the other side and that's where you're actually going to learn proper real changes that you can bring on for for future like it's not just a matter of like a quick fix kind of like get get it all over and done with in, in a short period of time it's like we want to be able to support you through them sabotaging patterns through them stressful life events so then you come out stronger after it yeah, no, absolutely. Because like over the last, I've been doing this for nearly seven years now and I've worked with several people for prolonged periods of time, you know, like two years, four years. I've even had some people that I've been working with for like five years. And it's just like, that's that's always really my main goal when I work with anybody is like try and get you into like a really long-term type of approach have that long-term mindset and like you said you know realize that this is a journey that you're on and like any journey with any part of your life there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs and it's figuring out how you react in those downward periods that's it's in those periods that you're going to learn the most about yourself yeah yeah so it's like like we all need support and accountability like i have uh Spanish tutor because my Spanish is <laughs> like pretty poor and it's getting better. I have uh you know jujitsu coach, I have a coach for MMA, 
had several like business coaches. I've always over the last like seven years tried to have lots of support from mm-hmm. other people because I know that's how I'm going to excel or, or improve or to be able to provide more value. And yeah. obviously the same goes then for people that we work with. We provide them the support, you know, because they're not getting support from anybody else. It's them supporting their family or yeah, the work that they manage or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And that's it. Like it's like, it's, that's why it's so important to have that support network around you to have that coach in your corner who you can call upon when you're going through them struggles. Cause again, life happens. There's life is challenging. There's got to be stressful situations, be it at work, be it at home, be it like sickness, be it all of these things are got to happen. And like, when we're working with clients, like we we get to see a really deep insight into their world and we understand that. Like people go through some big challenging times, but when they have support in them challenging times, it allows them to learn so much and be able to move through it with a lot more ease compared to when you're just trying to do it on your own. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cause it's it's like in those difficult weeks when like let's say you are in a negative mindset or you feel like you have sabotaged your yourself with whatever maybe food or training or something one of your triggers popped up at least if you have that support in that week you're going to be able to get through it so much easier and it's like in the past when I was doing a lot of counseling and therapy on a regular basis you know I was literally having a session every one to two weeks and I know that if I didn't have those sessions booked in with the lady that I was working with like I was going to continue to just not address the issue so I'm very happy I did it now because it would have like obviously been a lot worse and there's no price yeah. in mental health, but yeah, it's just so important to have that support. And yeah. Um, so like with, uh, with an actual process that people can follow. So getting your triggers figured out that would and build in self-awareness that we could say pretty much that's foundational, like step one. Yeah. And then yeah. step two from there, what would you say that? could be after that yeah so it's one of the big things uh one of the systems that i have in place for myself is like awareness without action is useless so that's awareness without action is useless so step one is become aware and that might even just be literally sitting down and journaling and writing out what your triggers are what your stresses are and really could become shining that light on them things that are causing you that stress that are causing you to re- react in them ways and once you become aware of them I want you to actually go to that next step. And that's where we want to zoom out. We want to zoom out and actually ask ourselves like, right, why is that happening? Why do I do that? Why is that being a trigger for me? Like, so this is allowing you to like, you're in the moment, then you zoom out and then you're asking yourself the bigger question. It's like, right, what is actually going on here? Like, why am I stressed there? Like, because a lot of times we're stressed, not for the reason that we think we're stressed. There's all of the other shit that's happening around that. Mm-hmm. So when we have that initial awareness, the next step is zooming out and actually asking yourself the bigger questions of what's actually going on. So then once you have that step, once you start start having that deeper sense of self-awareness, it's not just that a superficial awareness, it's having that deeper understanding of why we do what we do. Then the next step from there, step three, is asking yourself, it is probably the most important question you can learn to ask yourself, what do I need right now? So if you can ask yourself that question, honestly, what do I actually need right now? When you ask yourself that question and like just be really truthful of what drops in, like that's going to give you the next step you need to take. So again, we've got that awareness. We're zooming out. We're asking ourselves a bigger question to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Once we have that understanding, then we're asking ourselves, what do I need right now? And then step number four is take fucking action. Actually (laughs) do, do what drops in, do what it is that you know that you should do. Because a lot of times we have that awareness we start understanding things. We know all of these things we should do, but we actually don't do anything. And then that just keeps us in that loop of sabotage. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing more powerful than just pulling the finger out and taking action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Like it's, it's such a simple framework to understand as well, but absolutely like taking action is always going to be the biggest thing for sure. Because if you look at anybody who's got results, they all have, pretty much the same qualities it's consistency they've stayed persistent and they've just stayed like really stubborn with their goal of like even on the weeks where they didn't want to do things they still showed up and sure it didn't have to be perfect they didn't have to do the three workouts or or eat perfectly but they still did 
one workout or they still tried to eat mindfully or they did that the best that they could for that week. And it's like, once you just do that consistently, and then obviously once you have the support, then it's like, you're taken off, you know, it's literally, yeah. you're going into orbit yeah. and yeah. you're going to see like amazing results. But yeah. no, I love that framework. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. And that's one of, I think that's one of the hidden secrets with, with coaching and with the work that we do. It's, it's not about the big mammoth changes that we're trying to make in someone's lifestyle in a short period of time. It's actually looking at the small, simple little changes that we're making, but being consistent over a long period of time with them. And cause that's what it like that in itself is probably one of the number one areas of sabotage that I see people doing is they try to throw the kitchen sink at everything and try to change absolutely everything. And I think they have to have 100% on this diet. They need to train five days a week. They need to do fast. They need to do da, 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 da. have this amazing self-care, meditate. Like, and literally fill up all of this, like these 10, 15 different things that they want to achieve each day, each week. And of course, it's not going to be sustainable. Whereas if you can, all right, let's kind of counter nutrition and I can actually track our, track our calories and our macros. Let's upper steps and get two, three solid workouts in a week. If you do the three of them things consistently over a long period of time, you're going to get results. Whereas a lot of people try to do about another five or six things on top of that plus, and then they wonder why they burn out. They wonder why they can't keep it going. So it's like sabotage is we try to actually change too much. Whereas it's one of the things success is boring. Success is the simple things done on repeat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause like I have, I've worked with so many people that have been like, oh, I didn't realize this actually, you know, I didn't feel like I had to do that much the last four months or the last six months. So it's like, and I almost feel bad. I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, you need to make it super simple. It's like sleep, food, exercise. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Exactly those three things. Obviously there's so many things that, that come into it, but if you really just simplify it down as much as you need to, it's like, mm you're just optimizing things that you're already doing. You're improving your sleep so that you wake up in the morning and you don't have to hit the snooze alarm 17 times. It's like, you can just wake up and be like, yeah, I actually feel fine. I like, I can, I can get up now if I want to. Yeah. Same thing. Obviously with, with training and food, there is quite a lot of strategy involved in it. It's a case of figuring out specifically, what do you like? What works best for your body? You know, do we need to make things specific around your cycle or, or, you know, work around your injuries and stuff so obviously there is a lot of, of specifics like that but you can just keep it simple in terms of framework of like sleep food and exercise and and yeah. once you just figure out what's realistic for you then that's mm. a very simple place to start from for sure yeah and i think that's a big one that like just to kind of shine the light back on that one is like for women is like working with your cycle because that's it in itself can be another way of sabotage whereas like if you're not actually in tune with your cycle if you're trying to push when you should be relaxing if you're trying to push when you should be actually slowing things down and just having that and be a bit more gentle on yourself like of course it's going to be hard whereas a lot of times it's like we have that idea it's like i need to just keep pushing i need to train harder i need to do more i need to do all of this it was like actually it's like the more you work with your body the more you work with your cycle it actually allows you to find that rhythm within yourself. And that's where you're actually going to have more of that sustainability in the long term of what it is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because like everyone's so different. Like I've worked with some people that are like, you know, uh, the the week leading up to my period, like loads of cravings. My mood is massively affected. My energy is like three out of 10. You know, I just don't want to do anything. And then there's other people that I've worked with that are like, to be honest, I actually feel like pretty much okay it's like maybe one or two days before and one or two days after my period, like maybe I'm slightly affected, but there's not like a massive change. And so the point I'm getting at is like everyone is is unique and they have their own challenges. So it's a case of figuring out what's the best strategy for you, you know, because some people like I've worked with not that many, but a handful of people who can just like they can push hard and their body responds very well to it and they can, you know, adapt to that quickly but then there's other people who might have like three kids they run their own business they're juggling other things in their personal life and it's like it makes a lot more sense where we have maybe two weeks in the month that they push a little bit harder and then the other two weeks it's like they're just doing a couple of workouts taking it a bit easier the, the last week of their cycle 
And so they have that specific kind of strategy where they, they know what's realistic for them. Mm. And, and like you said, like once you can figure out what's sustainable, then you can just continue to repeat that. And, you know, you get a lot of success from that with, with everything, which is really cool. Yeah. Mm, Definitely. But yeah, if, um, if anyone hasn't read it yet, I have a free ebook that I wrote. I basically like put together everything that I learned from like loads of different books that I've spent years reading and listening to. And I all compiled it into like a 17 page ebook. So if you want that, I'll put the link in the description and you can download it for free. And it's just like, uh, designing your food and training in sync with your cycle. Um, so let's see what else did I write down. So just going back to like some of the self sabotage, um, the just to kind of be more specific about that vicious cycle that I mentioned earlier. What I see tends to happen a lot is like so you end up in this kind of all or nothing, or you have this perfectionist kind of mindset, and then because you maybe had like a bad day for whatever reason, now your stress levels are higher, maybe you feel more tired. And then when you're in that state, it's a lot easier to whatever, eat some chocolate or sweets or eat foods that you've put a label on as being a quote unquote bad food. So then after eating that, there's like guilt associated with it. And then now you end up in this kind of like fuck it mindset where you're like, oh, I just ruined my progress completely because I had this quote unquote bad food. And when, if you actually realistically looked at it, it might only be in 400 calories, which is not going to, you know, make or break you. But once you start getting into that mindset, you put a bad label on it. Then if you feel like you've ruined your progress, then it's easy to end up in that spiral that could yeah. last for weeks or for some yeah. people for months. Yeah. And, and obviously that affects your mental health. And then if you feel worse mentally then everything else just feels just as bad and now everything is like in a very bad state so that's like a kind of cycle that I see a lot uh you know that happens and many people have told me that's the exact cycle that they've ended up in yeah but um you know if you were working with someone that was in that cycle you know how would you help you know help them get out of it or what would your first kind of thing to go for be again it's like going back to the framework that we spoke into it's actually getting them to see is like have that first step of awareness of like right what's going on for you what's the things that are triggering you off in the first place that are causing you to act the way that, it, that you're acting so like what is the things that is causing you to stress to go for the bad food or whatever that might be and like start actually understanding why you're doing what you're doing and then from there it's looking at us it, like right what things that we can put into place that's going to help support you then so it's like, yeah, you're like when you have a job deadline at work, that's something that causes you a load of stress. So then that's that when you skip and meals during the daytime and you then you're coming home and you're binging the evenings, and that could be what the start could be the starting point of you of you on that spiral. So it's a matter of like, right, what things that we can do to support you when you know that you're coming up to certain triggers that would be going on. So it's like you know, it's like, right, there's a big job deadline coming up this week. You know your pattern of sabotage around this. So let's actually do a bit of food prep beforehand. Let's make sure that you've got like high protein, rich meals and snacks and stuff that are just super quick and easy for you to grab. So then you know that you're nourished throughout the day. So you'd rather than being starved all day and then binging at nighttime. So like it's looking at what's the little things that we can put into place that's going to support you. Mm -hmm. And then it could be the matter is like, right, what is the, what's all our things that can, we, we can do that's going to help support you through that busy period that you know that com is coming up for yourself? Is it like, are you doing any meditation or breath work or journaling? Is it just going out for a walk? Is it like, what what is the things that you can do? And then like, how can we actually support you to start actually implementing it? Mm -hmm. So like, I think that's the thing is like, where you're able to start understanding, it, then you can start mm -hmm. building, th building things in place to help support you rather than going rather than going down that path of making them bad choices you actually have an, an easier way to, to make the better choices that's going to actually support you mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely and uh something that i've found works well as kind of like a mindset shift or a reframe is to just be realistic about things and be like there's going to be some weeks that you won't be as busy and you'll be able to do a lot more in those weeks so you can just look at those as like progress weeks yeah. and if you look at your entire year if you have a busy job or if you, you have a lot going on, you might have like, let's say 40 weeks of the year that could potentially be progress weeks. 
Mm. And so those are weeks that you maybe have extra time to do self-care or workout or longer walks or whatever the thing is that you like to do. But then realistically, you might have 12 weeks the year that are going to be like busier with deadlines or, you know, you might have just other kind of just normal things going on, but means that your stress levels are higher. So if you realistically know that you might have 12 of those weeks a year, then it makes sense to take a step back and be like, okay, well, I don't want to burn myself out more. I don't want to cause myself more stress than I'm already under. So in those weeks, I'm going to do like one workout. So I'll maintain yeah. where I'm at. Instead of trying to do 10,000 steps, I'm going to maybe do like 5,000 steps average. Yeah. I'll like, you know, try to get a bit more sleep. And maybe I'll like, I'll say no a little bit more in those weeks to other people and be like, just be very honest and like, you know, I'm under a lot of stress right now. We can do this thing together when I've got more time, you know, because obviously saying, uh, I think you put a post about it recently, like saying no is is such a powerful thing to just to give time stuff time back yeah. to yourself you know so it's just yeah. like very like simple kind of practices like that of just being like okay maintenance week some weeks progress weeks other weeks yeah. and then at least that's kind of sustainable going forward and you don't have yeah. to be under more stress you know yeah i love that like it's again that's it's just that reframe for for people to have that shift in their mindset around it and i think another one to kind of speak into around this as well is looking at it's sometimes these weeks creep up on us and like we're in the thick of it before we even become aware of it so it's like actually having that surrender and that acceptance i was like all right i've i've binged over the last couple of days it's like i've been in that downward spiral completely unaware for the last few days and instead of beating myself up instead of staying stuck down there it's like just accepting like okay that that's cool i see that i've understood that like let's actually just look at what what can I what's the next step that I can do that's going to help support me because again a lot of times like we may catch ourselves being in that space uh, without us even knowing it and then we beat ourselves up even more and then that could keep us down for another few days another few weeks rather than actually just kind of like call call a spade a spade and goes like all right that was a shit couple of days um let's pick ourselves back up and and like let's make some better choices now and again that's where it can be so much more beneficial to have that support in people around you have a coach there to help to support you around there as well whereas when we do it on our own it's easier to fall into that shame spiral as well um so yeah that's not a one to kind of look at yeah no definitely i love that so much i feel like i do that every week nearly either myself or with anybody some people yeah. i'm working with you know because it's just if you can just really like be present in the moment right now and then be like, okay, what's in the past is in the past. It's gone. There's literally nothing we can do about it. We can learn a lesson from it for sure. There's some, some type of positive I can take out of what just happened for sure. Yeah. It's in the past. Like there's yeah. literally, it's gone. So what can we do right now in the present moment? That's going to be, you know, helpful or empowering so mm -hmm. that, why when i'm you know this time next week i can look back and be like oh yeah the last week was was really good i picked myself up well after those yeah. two days where you know whatever happened yeah so, yeah and a, and, a, and a bonus tip on that don't wait until monday don't wait until <laughs> monday when it could be like friday evening and you catch yourself there don't give yourself the weekend grace as well and, and wait till monday is like if it's if you catch yourself on a friday evening it's like oh the last few days will be crap tomorrow morning i'm waking up and going for a walk and i'm going to start making better choices again rather than waiting for monday like you're just adding all a couple of days in and you're just playing with fire so just as soon as you as soon as you catch yourself just make that conscious effort it was like all right let's let's get let's kind of start afresh as soon as possible definitely yeah it's like don't wait till monday don't wait till the new year don't wait till <laughs> the <first of> the <laughs> month. <laughs> don't wait till the first of the month uh what's another one don't wait till tomorrow don't wait till yeah. like that's another type of uh procrastination which is obviously self-sabotage yeah so like i'm always very adamant like if i'm in a let's say if i'm in a bad headspace about something I, i'll well for a second i'll think like oh maybe i'll wait till tomorrow but then my rational brain will kick in and be like realistically you know tomorrow means never because that's just self-sabotage so you actually need to just go and do something right now and that thing right now it doesn't have to be a big thing i could literally just be like okay 
how am I going to pull myself out of this, you know, depressed state of mind that I'm in or, or like I, f- I deal with a lot of anxiety. That's been like a lifelong thing. So I've learned how to manage that. So if I feel anxious, I'm like, okay, something I can do right now. Uh, hop in the shower for 60 seconds, freezing colds. I'll feel much better or go out for a walk for literally five minutes or write down three things that are swirling around my head right now that are causing me anxiety. And that's something that literally could just take one to five minutes. Yeah. So, so once I've done it, it's like, I don't have to wait till tomorrow, you know? So it might sound a bit extreme, but I'm very adamant. It's like, if you want to like see a change, like just do do the most ridiculously easy thing that you can do right now. Like so yeah. stupid, simple that you almost yeah. feel bad doing that. I'm yeah. like, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Like it reminds me of, I think it's Tony Robbins with this. It's like in order to change your state, you need to change the physiology. So if you want to change your mindset that you're stuck in a rut, you need to change your physiology. So that's doing something to change how you're actually feeling because our thoughts, like whatever thought that we have, this mulling around there, we're beating ourselves up, or are like, like kicking us down, whatever that might be, like that's going to feed into how we're how we're feeling. Then our feeling is going to dictate the actions that we take and that just keeps us in that loop. Whereas when we, what, whenever we have these low, these heavy thoughts, these negative thoughts, if we can shift up our physiology, that's changing how we're feeling, then that's going to be a really quick step. And again, as you said, it's cold shower, going for a walk, just just putting on a song and just dancing and moving your body, just doing something different so to change your physiology is just that quickest, easiest way to snap out of that funk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shaking is actually one of my favorite ones to do. <laughs> Always gives me a good laugh. But like last week, for example, there's a lady who I started working with and she had like a really big like presentation for uh for the company that she works for. And um she's like and obviously like any normal person deals with a bit of like anxiety or nerves beforehand so i was literally just like getting her to shake for a whole minute you know just breathe in and it, like if you've never done any shaking you should try it if you like need to like before a presentation like just de-stress or just get yeah. more in the moment and out of your head and into your body but that's another really good one if i know most people don't like cold showers so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So true. Um, yeah, and that's really cool. Um, see, so some other ideas that I wrote out, a really common one is like um, a lot of people would say that, you know, oh, um, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm like in my 40s or I'm in my 50s now. And, you know, it's a lot harder now to get results than before. Like in the past, I could just, you know, do a bit more and, you know, I tone up a lot quicker or I'd get stronger quicker or lose weight quicker or whatever their goal is. And something that a lot of people say is like, maybe my metabolism has changed now because I'm in my forties or fifties. And when you actually look at a lot of physiology and stuff, you realize like your metabolism, of course it does change as you get older, but it doesn't like your metabolism doesn't decrease to the extent that you think it would. Like, Mm -hmm. of course it drops a little bit, but not a whole lot. And what actually changes a lot more is like, if you look at what your life looks like now in your forties versus what it looks like, or what it did look like in your 20s like realistically when you're in your 40s you probably have a lot more stress you probably got a house you probably got a mortgage you've probably got kids or if not kids you might have a partner you've got all these other things that you're juggling whereas when we're in our 20s it's like you're not really thinking about anything like that so the stress levels are way lower and obviously when stress is lower our bodies respond a lot better to everything you know Mm yeah so I, I just wanted to bring that one up but any yeah. thoughts on that one yeah like i think that's a big one like it's again it's that whole thing it's um whenever whenever we look at it and it was easier back then it's like yeah probably was but like as you said your lifestyle has completely changed so it's the matter of actually looking at it's like what were some of the things that you might have been doing back then that you're not doing now it's like a lot of times like you're probably a lot more active on the day-to-day like where you're bringing in a lot more incidental exercise so it's a matter of looking as like if if you feel that is what that is something there it's like explore that story for yourself because the truth of the matter is it's just a story that you're telling yourself so actually explore that story like I'm, I'm very big on journaling putting the thoughts on the paper so it's actually just sit with it for a while and it's like right let's actually explore what that looks like for myself 
like what's the evidence that I have that that either makes that true or actually call out bullshit on yourself with that. Um, and as you start challenging yourself to write more and more and more, whenever you think you've got enough, just say, like, right, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? It just allows you to kind of really break that story down for yourself. And like as Iglan was saying, it's like, you're probably a lot more stressed. You probably have a lot more things going on in your day-to-day life. You probably are not moving as near as much as what you were. Is like your food and eating patterns probably are very different to what they were back then. So it's again that's actually allowing yourself to see and just kind of squash a lot of that, a lot of that internal dialogue. And then it's a matter of like, this is where I am. What's the changes that I want to make now moving forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, amazing. And while you're talking about that, I grabbed my journal. I've used this for many years, and for the last like I think since I set up the business nearly seven years ago, I've had a diary every year. So I'm like I'm always writing stuff into it like on a very regular basis so yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm a um, big fan too yeah and that's it like it was like whenever we were packing up to leave australia like it's like we had so like just getting rid of a lot of our stuff it was like i had literally a box of journals like i stood in front of the fire one night for about an hour just ripping pages up and burning and just kind of flicking through them and burning like there's so many journals from years and years um so yeah but like it's it's such a such a simple thing but a lot of people have a lot of resistance to it um but yeah it's just challenging yourself to do that because it gets you kind of look at things in a different perspective for yourself Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i think anytime you can take thoughts that might be swirling around your head and you put them on paper and you give them a form and a structure it can really like bring a lot of clarity to whatever it is that you're struggling with like this morning because well it's december 4th today but you know it's it's pretty much like the start of the month still so i just wrote out like what my goals and my intentions are for for this month and i just have a really simple framework that i use the five f's uh fitness finances fun family future and it's just five categories you know so they're kind of like the most important categories for me um so it's really helpful, you know, just to have that intention and, and have it, I have them all down on paper now. So I can just revert back to that now for the rest of the month. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't have to keep that in my head of thinking like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. It's like, it's there on paper. It's like, now it gives me more headspace to think about other things, you know? Yeah, 100%. Like, and again, like in this stuff like that is like, if it's not written down on paper, it's like, two three weeks go past in the in the month and you're like where where's the actual month gone i haven't wor- haven't moved the needle forward in, in any areas like and you just got busy being busy because you didn't have that focused that focused work for yourself whereas writing it down keeping it in keeping it in the forefront of your mind just helps brings you back into that focus as well mm-hmm. yeah i think that's a actually a good one you just reminded me of so like a common problem or challenge is like uh like not getting the things done that you wanted to so it's like if you want to get stronger you want to tone up you want to build some muscle you want to just feel better overall obviously training let's say 30 minutes two or three times a week is going to be your essential thing each week but realistically if you don't have it wrote down either in your written diary or it's not blocked off in your calendar for let's say 7 30 to 8 a.m monday and friday if it's not down it's not going to happen simple yeah. as that so yeah. that's like a really simple practice it's like if you use google calendar or if you have a work calendar like you need to block off specific times because the same way if you're in work if you don't have a meeting scheduled with someone it's not going to happen because yeah. neither we had it organized so it's like a soup like super simple thing to do but yeah if you block it off it's 90 percent likely that it's going to happen for sure yeah and that's it it's like it's one of them big excuses the common problems we hear it's like we don't have time to do x y or z i don't have time to work out i don't have time to do all of these stuff but again it's like if we treat our life how we treat how we show up and work is like like you don't just wing your work week hoping that you're going to get everything done like you literally have to have everything planned out you have to have the get meeting scheduled in so it's why not treat your life like that? So schedule in your training, schedule in that time for yourself, so that, that family time. And like when you, like you can feel quite hesitant for some people where like it's a bit more rigid, but the more you do so, like it just makes it so much easier and you actually realize you have a lot more time than you actually first felt. Yeah, absolutely. There's a really good um, 
exercise that I learned off, uh, I think it was one of my first business coaches. He was like, do a time audit of your week. Yeah. Well, that's very eye opening. Like there's 168 hours in a week, obviously 24 hours in a day. And like literally just take like 10 or 15 minutes and get a piece of paper and write down and do an audit of your entire week and look at where it's like uh it's like a leak in bucket. Like there's going to be lots of holes in the bottom of the bucket or time that you're wasting on things. So you can look at your entire week and write down and see what kind of hours are you spending on work? What time are you spending on other things? And like where are places that you could, you know, plug the leak and book it and essentially have more time for yourself or more time for your kids or things that are actually important, you know? And obviously one of the biggest ones are these things, your phone, like, you know, social media, TikTok, probably one of the worst ones, like so well designed to keep you in a scroll yeah. for, you know, an hour. Yeah. So yeah. like, um, that's something I've been keeping a good eye on the last few years is like how much screen time am I spending? So I have a rule for myself now where like, if I am going to use social media, I'll download the app and I'll post, but then I'll just delete the app off my phone. And that's like, honestly, save me like, three to six hours every single week because i yeah because even if i go to like open the app it's not on my phone so it's like oh yeah i should probably just go and do something worthwhile <laughs> you know and I just yeah. Keep yeah so that's been a simple kind of like hack if you want to call it to like get back three to six hours a week you know yeah so true i'm like and that's it like it's if it's deleting the app or as getting some of the other app blocking there's different apps you can get that blocks it and stuff like that for and you can put certain parameters there's loads of different things that you can do there but again it's it is it's looking at like where where is where are you putting your time and i guess one of the things it's the, when we when we know what our values are when we know what's important to us it allows us to actually figure out where we want to invest our time and our energy in uh, because a lot of times we just spend our time doing stuff that's actually not important. And then we wonder why we don't get anything done, why we don't have time to do the things that we actually feel is important. Whereas just, yeah, it's just bringing a bit more of that planning back in, just being a bit stricter on ourselves with that. It just allows to yeah find that bit a lot more, a lot more ease with for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, another one I wanted to mention was uh, just around training specifically. So, um, you know, a good few people have said to me that, uh, I'll just mention a few different things. So it's like either, you know, they haven't toned up as much as they want, or they haven't, you know, seen that progress with, with their physique that they wanted. Um, you know, they have maybe had a break for a while, especially since COVID. And then they went back into training, but instead of doing it sustainably, they went back in at 110%. And then they got injured after like four or six weeks um or if they didn't get injured they felt too sore and because they felt so sore they had so much fatigue that then that affected how they felt you know the next day for work or whatever uh and then a big one as well <laughs> this is a massive one a lot of people have complained to me in the past like oh i was doing classes or working with this person and they were basically like a drill sergeant you know they thought i was in the military and it was just like shouting and crazy stuff for like an hour and yeah just not sustainable again you know so i thought they were some interesting things that have you know that pop up on a regular basis yeah so it'd be good to go through <laughs> but um i think the drill sergeant one is quite a common maybe association yeah people think like oh if someone's a coach or a trainer they behave in this way they shout and they, yeah and they tell you to you know do 100 burpees and all this kind of crap but like and i think that's the thing like it's like if you bring it back into what you were speaking of earlier it's like if we look at our training as well through the lens of it's like right there's 52 52 weeks in a year 40 of them weeks like we do really good at training and then like the other 12 weeks not so good like they're just more maintenance you're gonna get results whereas if you go hell for leather for four or five weeks match yourself get injured then you're not able to train for it a certain length of time and then you go back like there's good it's not like you're not going to get the results that you want where it's the matter of again first things first like working with your specific body and knowing and understanding what's going on with your body having exercises curtailed to you it's going to be a safer and more sustainable way of actually approaching your exercise mm -hmm. yeah for sure but i think uh the way to know if someone's 
a bad coach or maybe they don't really know what they're doing. It's like they get everybody to do burpees. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. we have Kira over here who's 55 and she had uh torn cartilage in her knee 10 years ago. But yeah, she's still going to do burpees. It's like, how does that make any sense? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely, definitely not native. <laughs> that's obviously something that uh, both of us really, you know, take a lot of pride in as being very specific of like what movements are going to work best for you, you know, because obviously yeah. you've got so much experience with what are some of the different things that you've done before? Anatomy and motion was one. And then, what yeah, like, anatomy, like I come from a sports physio background, uh, so sports and exercise rehabilitation, done like anatomy and motion, which is really in depth into gait and 3D movements. I've done a lot of different training around um, the myofascial system, how to train with like more of the kind of Tom Myers, like myofascial approach as well. Um, yeah, a heap of different stuff. But yeah, like again, so much of that is it's, it's not about, it's them old ideas of like, you need a like, you need a like no pain, no gain, train hard, all that stuff. It's actually train smart, working with your body. You're going to get so much more results. You're going to move a lot more efficient and you're going to, it's just going to be a lot more sustainable for that, for that long-term picture. Yeah, no, for sure. Cause like I spent years like kind of obsessing over studying like exercise science and periodization and figuring out, cause I'm really lazy. So I'm always like, well, what's the easiest and most effective quickest way that I can get somewhere. And it's actually, when it comes to training, it's being at a subjective seven or eight out of 10 for most of your workouts. So if you have yeah. three weeks of the month, you might train at seven or eight out of 10. And then for the other week of the month, you might do a deload session, which is like maybe five out of 10. So you've got that recovery week. And then you just kind of repeat that kind of cycle. And the results that people get off that is way better because it's like yeah. you don't get injured. You're not super fatigued. You still enjoy training as well, which is yeah. the most important thing because obviously if you enjoy it, then you're going to continue with it. So, so then you can continue to progress for years, not just, you know, a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those are a lot of the main ones that I wrote out, you know, um, they're probably most of the common things that, that I've noticed. Um, but have there been any other things or kind of patterns that you've noticed over the last few years that we didn't kind of. <clears throat> no, I can feel like. The majority of the main ones like it was like is what we have covered. Like there's so much more stuff you could speak into each and every one of them. Um uh, like I think another one I uh, probably could speak into a little bit would be a like a bit more specifically around the diet. So it's like I've tried all of these different diets, but nothing's really worked or should yeah. I do it should I do it and fasting or should I like, have seen that this year diet's better than this diet? Or, like and there's just so much conflicting information around nutrition out there. Um and like that causes a lot of problems for people. Whereas like then like people have been on maybe other programs that follow the specific way, but like it's just again it wasn't sustainable like they might have got results on that program but then they put the weight on over the next 12 months after they came off that program or off that diet and stuff so yeah, yeah like i think that's one that could be cool to just kind of speak into as we finish up definitely yeah so i think some red flags to look out for if someone is adamantly saying you need to reduce one or any of the macronutrients by a lot if someone says you need to go really low carb or cut out carbs something like a keto diet you want to stay away from them as far as you can, unless you have some specific medical issue, which is not going to be 99% of people. If you hear someone being like, oh yeah, you should do a really low fat diet. You should definitely run away from them as fast as possible, unless you want some serious health issues and awful, you know, hormone issues and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyone that's like in the camp of like low fat or low carbs or low protein or low anything is usually a bad idea because what the question you need to ask yourself is is like whatever way i'm eating now can i see myself doing that for the rest of my life and if your honest answer is no then what you're doing is not sustainable for you so you yeah. need to figure out well what's something that i can actually stick with so it's usually just a more balanced approach with your food you know with your protein carbs fats different micronutrients stuff like that yeah and it's just a case of being like having some common sense and, and kind of thinking logically about it. Obviously, like there's specific strategies that you need to do for each person of like, you know, uh, some people might be 
uh, lactose intolerant or they can't eat wheat or vegetarian or vegan or so that can make it a little bit more complicated but in general regarding like it doesn't matter if you have any of those issues or any of those challenges or or preferences it's like regardless of the way you eat if you keep the balance of all your macronutrients that's a really good place to start from um but yeah that's something that just really like boils my blood because i've worked with a good few people who have been like oh yeah i worked with this person and they said eat 10 grams of fat per day and yeah I'm like, why just why would you why would you do that to someone it's like you purposely trying to like give them an issue in the long run yeah that, that exact same person is like oh yeah i lost weight for six weeks but now i've gained it all back and i actually gained an extra whatever five on top of it you know yeah yeah and that's it like i think what you said at the start of that it's like looking at whatever way that you're looking at eating does it can you see yourself eating that same way for the rest of your life like I think that is the one that we need to really just hone in on whereas like it's eating that balanced diet having a starting to create a healthy relationship with how you look at food uh, and that's going to be that's going to be the biggest thing whereas like yeah you might go like keto you might go like eight, like eight minutes fast you might do like low fat all of these things and you might get a quick fix you might get a quick result with it but it's not sustainable and it's not going to be good for your body in the long term so it's a matter of actually it's like it's looking at your looking at your health in that longevity piece and it's like what is actually going to be enjoyable what's going to be sustainable in the long term for myself and as you take that approach again when you come back to everything that we've been speaking in today it's like the small simple things done consistent is going to get you to where you want to be yeah no definitely i think um i was just reading through some of the notes there that i wrote and it's um a big thing that comes up is like i ask a lot of people like have you tracked your calories and macros before and there's a lot of people who are like uh yeah i track my calories for a bit but i don't have a clue what macros are and like that's one of the most foundational principles for having something that's sustainable with your food because ideally you need to be able to look at a food and be like i have a rough idea of how much protein how much carbs how much fat how much fiber is in that that food because if you yeah. don't understand what macros are or roughly what's in what you're always going to be guessing and if you're always guessing then everything's going to be all over the place your weight's going to go up and down your energy is going to go up and down you know so these are like really basic things to kind of understand um especially like weight watchers in a slimmer world they're all about the sins or the points or whatever bullshit name they're giving them <laughs> but it's like you know it's it's dancing around the issue it's like you still don't know what macros are in what you know yeah and that's yeah. the most important thing because if you know what the macros are then you know what the calories are if you know what the calories are you can make an empowered decision you yeah know? yeah so. and again and that's the thing like and it's like as you understand that and learn to understand that so much more for yourself that's where you can actually start seeing that you can still have really healthy choices and you can still have some of the things that you love so some of them guilty pleasures for yourself but like actually doing it without having to feel guilty um so yeah like it's again and that's where we want to look at it as a lifestyle choice that we want to make yeah no absolutely good stuff well i think uh that was really insightful and i <laughs> i love to vent about certain things so thank you for yeah that's <laughs> no, so good yeah um, i appreciate it but yeah no that was really good and um if uh you're watching this on youtube or if you're listening on spotify or, or wherever it is if you've got any questions about anything please like any question at all doesn't matter if you think it's big or small like there's no such thing as a stupid question so if you'd like to ask something either drop a comment down below um or you can email finn it's finn at coach .com. you can email me it's elan at coach .com. or you can just send us a message on either of our linkedins or instagram they'll all be linked below and um yeah more than happy to help if you do have questions about something but that's pretty much it for today um we'll come up with another topic for for the next podcast we'll maybe do after christmas and um yeah that's uh was really good so thanks mil for that today awesome thank you nice one